We have been talking uh, in these two days about the importance of having legislation, the importance of following the international standards and norms, the importance of having uh, mechanisms in place, the importance of training. I want to challenge this and I want to invite all of us to start thinking about not only the abidance to the law, but the abidance to social norms. And the reason I talk about this is that when you ask people why they act in a good way, it's not because they want to obey the law. Most of them don't know about the law, but they want to look good. They want to be good people. And more about that, more, more than that, what they want is other people to think that they are also good. And I think in, uh, in our work we have to speak to the hearts of people and uh, engage them to understand the legislation, not because it's the legislation, but to create a social norm around it that they believe other people expect them to obey the law. For example, um, in conditions of detention. We're talking that there are about one million children in detention. We all know the legislation, international legislation says institutionalization should be used as a last resort, detention should be a last resort. There are mechanisms in place, there are monitoring tools, there are trainings, but still children are subject to ill treatment and torture and negativity. And still uh, prisons, detention centers are breeding grounds for more violence and more crime. So I think what we have to do is not only training, not only legislation, but finding mechanisms to make a mindset change and to make it uncool for the professionals, for the children, for the others, to uh, abuse the children, to, to support the children, even, even those who have committed an offense, in a positive way and to give them a second chance. I think in all the trainings that we do, we add the communication perspective, communicating with children, what is childhood. Uh, and when we do trainings, we start with putting people in the place of someone who has a child. For example, the police or others don't think about the children who have committed an offense as children. They think of them as a different group. Whereas if you start a training saying two things, either close your eyes and think about when you were 12, 13, 14. Think about what you have done. And not ask people to think, to say it out loud, but to feel it in themselves. Because we were all adolescents and most of us have done something maybe that was against the law, but we didn't know about it. So one is to make people feel it in themselves. The other is to say, think about you get a call that your child or your niece or your nephew has been arrested and is in the police station. How would you like the police to treat your relative, your son, your niece, your nephew? And then start the training. Uh, because if you make people feel how they would like themselves and how they would like their close ones to be treated, then you can show that it's for all other children as well. In, a, in my work in different countries, there were many times when we had uh, professionals walk up, like the police or social workers or the judges, and say, I have done things wrong, and now I know why I shouldn't have done it. And uh, this is at the personal level a change. And since I'm working for UNICEF and at the institutional level, I have seen changes where now we have specialized police for children in some countries. And we have special uh, courts for children, child-friendly courts, uh, youth courts, and they're trained personnel. And they're really taking into consideration the child as, uh, as the subject.